Thank you, Christy. Welcome to Elon Community Church, United Church of Christ. Thank you for being here uh, in person, and we are welcoming everyone who is here today because they're online. They're on either our the, the uh, cover of our webpage, the front page of our webpage is streaming live or Facebook live right now, and you might see it during the week. And we're just so glad whenever you can do it to be here. As one word of preparation during the announcements today, today is Communion Sunday, since it's the first Sunday of the month. Uh, for those who are here, we have these convenient little two-in-one wrappers. So if, what you need to do is see your cup. You're going to see that there's two lids to lift off. The clear one with the little purple crosses on it will open up and expose the bread to you. And when we are receiving the bread, you will rip that off and, and use the bread. Then when you're done with the bread, then you can rip off the next one, the foil one, the foil tab, and the cup will be exposed and you'll be able to receive. So we want to make sure you all do that. And for the rest of you, I hope that you have something at home, whatever it is, um, to, to uh, be the elements of communion for you today. Uh, whether it's uh, some kind of juice or water or bread or crackers, whatever works out, uh, please make sure you have that handy as we get ready for uh, the service even now. Um, we also um, have an exciting month ahead. We have music camp that will be meeting on Thursdays and people, uh, some of our young people have been signing up for it. And we also, on Tuesdays, are going to be doing Vacation Bible School. And I am going to turn it over to Pastor Sharon to share a little bit about the exciting news about Vacation Bible School. Good morning. Good morning. So glad to be back this morning. I am so excited to talk to you about Vacation Bible School this morning. Our theme for the month, which we're going to meet on Tuesdays, is Christmas in July. Now, how cool is that? You know, the past few months have been kind of difficult. Uh, you know, having to stay home, having to do school from home. We're gonna have some fun from home with VBS. And our theme this year um, is gonna talk about the Christmas story. Because sometimes with the busyness of Christmas, we kind of lose that. So if your children want to do that, um, Please email me or Monica um, today or tomorrow would be great because we're trying to put together bags for each child to have and come by and pick up. Um, and they will have the activities for the week. We're going to be doing that on Mondays from 12 to 8. But say you're going to be away one week, let us know. and We'll have your bag prepared and we can deliver it to you. Or if you can't get there on Monday, let us know, and, and Randy or I would be glad to drop it off. And then on Tuesdays, we're going to have two Zoom times that you can get together, one at 11 in the morning and one at 6 in the evening. And that time we can get together, we can um, we videotape the story the other week, and you can see the story of the week, and then you can see how to do your craft activities, enjoy some really neat science experiments. And let me just say, Miss Jennifer and I did some great ones for this week at the beach on Friday. So, um, and then uh, Pastor Randy will lead you in some kind of recreation or give you some suggestions for recreation. It will be a short Zoom meeting, not too long, but just enough to get information and to have fun with it at home this week. We look forward to our children participating in Vacation Bible School this year. Thanks, Sharon. And now let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the worship service by getting ready to turn to the order of worship that you have before you. And for those of you who are here with us in the sanctuary, would you please stand if you are able, and we will share together in the call to worship. Jesus says, come to me, everyone, when I play a joyful tune, we'll dance. When I sing a lament, we'll weep. When I chant for justice, we'll sing along. Now again, I'm not asking you to sing out loud, but if you could just sing uh, and enjoy this wonderful song that we all know. We're only going to be doing two verses today, O Beautiful for Spacious God. Oh, <laughs> 
of confession. Jesus Christ can and does show us the way. He acted to set things right in this life of contradictions where I want to serve God with all my heart and mind, but am pulled by the influence of sin to do something totally different. Have mercy upon us. Jesus calls us, come to me, all who labor and are heavy burdened. We'll share your yoke and make it light. I will lead in the way you deserve to travel. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson, first one today, is from Romans, the seventh chapter, the 15th verse through the 25th verse, the first part of the 25th verse. Hear these words. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity in the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived. And I died, and the very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity in the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and just, and good. Did what is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, working death in me, though through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become simple beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, and for I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I do that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in, in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So for the children's message today, you might notice I have a Christmas tree on my head. And why would I have a Christmas tree on my head? So I'm going to kind of divert from the scriptures of the morning, and I've already given Randy that heads up, because I want to talk to our children as they gather around today about something that we're going to talk about in our Vacation Bible School. 
And each week we're going to talk about some things that we experience during Advent. And this week we're going to talk about joy. So I want you children to think about what brings you joy. Now, you know, again, as I said earlier, this has kind of been a tough time. But how have we found joy in, in having to stay at home or to be with our families? What good things have we done? It might be working a puzzle or learning a new game together. Uh, it could be just simply sitting around the table and doing our schoolwork and our work from home with our parents. You know, it has really brought us all together. In my house, it's been cooking. I don't cook much, but I have sure learned how to cook. And sometimes that's joyful, sometimes not so much. <laughs> but, you know, it brings joy to Ted's face when I put food on the table. So we're going to talk about joy, though, and the joy of Mary and her um, finding out about Jesus this week. So stay tuned, and if you get a chance, uh, join us for Vacation Bible School. We're going to try to share some of that online, so maybe you'll get to see our story this week actually on our Elon Alive page. But let's say a prayer about that. Oh, gracious God, we thank you of the, for the joy that you bring in our lives for our families and our friends that we see from a distance and the things that we've gotten to do when times have been tough. But we know that there's the joy of Christ in our hearts, and we pray that we share it with those that we meet. Amen. Amen. Well, as we come to the scripture, the gospel reading, and I hope you've been able to grasp uh, that very heavy reading from Paul, we now turn to yet some other interesting reading in, in Matthew as we continue in Matthew. And I want to always remind you that both the readings in Romans and the readings in Matthew work together. They don't stand alone. So I hope that as we remember some of the things that were read before, as we come into these lessons, that it's helpful to you. Today we'll be reading chapter 11, two sections from chapter 11, beginning at verse 16. Listen now as I read. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John not came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At, the, at that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all that are heavy, I'm sorry, that are weary and carrying a heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest from your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thus ends our scripture readings. Let us be in prayer together. And now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
Well, again, it's so hard to say you can't make this stuff up. This is the lectionary. We follow the scriptures that have been assigned for a particular week. And this is the week that this one has been assigned. And in the summer, we do see a connecting point between a lot of the readings. Because one may or may not know, but the Gospel of Matthew has always been called the teaching gospel. And so we have an opportunity to learn some very important things. And also, by putting all of this together, we get a chance to understand. But I also add, as we talked about and introduced last week, this Pauline theology. And Paul has a lot to say to us. In fact, in the, in the letter to the Romans, we believe that it is one of the only times Paul had time, if you will, to take a breath. In other words, in every other of the situations that he wrote letters to churches, there seemed to be a real problem. There seemed to be something that was going on that was so strong that he had to deal with that problem. And so he would answer the problems or try his best to deal with them theologically. Romans, on the other hand, it would be the closest thing that we would call to, Rome, to Paul's treatise or his, his book of theology, if you will. In other words, he took time to really put together a lot of the teachings that were already shared. We believe this was probably one of his uh, later writings. And so there's a lot to take in here. He has a lot of experience with what he has shared, going from place to place, beginning Christian communities, being throughout all of the lands, and now here he is, being in prison and out of prison, being abused, and here he stands to speak these important words to us. And they're kind of heavy, aren't they? In fact, it's kind of hard to even understand it at times when he says, my mind does one thing, my spirit does another. And then he also says that famous line, oh, wretched man that I am. Uh, we only hear that one other time in our uh, talking and in our traditions, and that's through the song Amazing Grace that saved a wretch like me. And sometimes people have said, well, I don't always feel, sorry, I'm having a little trouble back here. Uh, I don't always feel like a wretch. And so, uh, in fact, sometimes people have even softened that line and said, save the soul like me. Uh, but this wretchedness that Paul feels, some people have wondered, was he talking about himself? Because there's a lot of I language in here. In other words, I feel this, I do this, I see this, I, I, I. That I language would sense, was Paul struggling with all kinds of these issues? Was he embattled in his own soul, and his own mind? We have to ask ourselves that question. And when Jesus in the gospel is addressed a question about what is this generation like, in other words, the people that he is talking to, preaching to. He says some very interesting things. He doesn't say, oh, they're really nice people. He doesn't say they're, they're awful. But he, he's basically saying, they're not getting it. In other words, there are, they're like children squabbling about doing something fun like dancing or doing something sad like mourning. And either way, People don't feel the need to do that. Even in our call to worship today, we shared those very simple words. When we're called upon to dance, will we dance? When we're called upon to mourn, will we mourn? And Paul is asking a similar kind of question. He's saying, when I struggle with what is going on in life, am I going to struggle? In other words, am I going to reflect upon these things that are going on in my own life? These things that are going on in the world around me? Am I going to see the importance of this as an aspect of who I am as a follower of God? I think 
often we have reduced Christian faith to some kind of a free ride. And that free ride is grace. As wonderful as it is, it still requires a sense of reflection and responsibility on our part. That doesn't mean that we're responsible for our own salvation. What it truly means is, as part of that process of salvation, that process of understanding who we are and how we will live our lives, there needs to become a self-understanding. And that's where the I language came in. But I want to remind you that we're putting this together. Is Paul really only speaking about this notion of his struggle? When only the chapter before that we read last week talks about that relationship that we have through God, through Jesus Christ, that gives to us a new foundation, a grace that goes beyond the law, that goes beyond all of the things that we have already known and understood and gives to us a wonderful an opportunity for a new relationship, almost, if you will, as he will say later in his treatise, a transformation. So we need to put this in its place. This is part of that struggle that we have, the struggle of who we are. And like I said last week, who y'all are too. It's not just my own job. It's not just for me. It is for each other in community as we grow together. As we face these struggles, my friends, remember this. We are not perfect. In fact, we are more broken than we sometimes want to realize. Or we've taken the other route. We feel ourselves so broken, we can never be repaired. Both sides are not fair. For even Paul, when he says, wretched man that I am, where can I turn? He says to God. Thanks be to God. The idea that when we face up to what we have to is not a positive thing, so we sometimes pass that up and move to some other kind of place, which means immediately to grace. The theologian and pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said, there's a thing known as cheap grace. And there's almost that sense, that simplicity that we feel can keep us from really examining and struggling. As we look at the world in which we live in, what do you think Jesus would say about this generation? If he was asked the direct question, what about this generation? I don't know, do you want me to answer? Am I Paul? I think we might understand all of us, obviously, that we are facing struggle as well. Where Jesus would almost bemoan the fact that when John the Baptist and his disciples would not eat, they thought they were weird. And so when Jesus and his disciples actually eat and meet with sinners, meet with people who are in trouble, they call him a drunkard and a glutton. Jesus is sharing the obvious fact that we are always looking for fault. We are always looking that we have the right answer and we own it and we protect it and we believe that that's all there is. However, Jesus says two things that I want to, to close with today and I want you to think about it as we prepare to go to the table. And that is, first of all, he talks about wisdom. He says, wisdom is known by its deeds. What's the deeds of wisdom? Well, it seems that there's an aspect of wisdom that comes, first of all, from truth. 
And I'm, I know that we've heard on this weekend of independence that truth will set us free. But we don't often want to see the truth. We often blind ourselves to the truth or live in our own convenient sense of what we want the world to look like or what the world is for us, whether we are successful or not successful. We become entrapped in that. But there are deeds to wisdom which come actually from the Old Testament, from Proverbs and the Psalms. Wisdom brings order from chaos. Wisdom, when one sees the truth, becomes humble. There's a sense of humility that comes. There is something that is worth protecting and guarding, but it is a pure, peaceable, gentle, and easy way of being. And it is full of mercy. It is full of good fruits. And this is the hardest one. It is without hypocrisy. Probably another hard thing that we have to face. Because we all know that we could say we're humble, but the minute we say we're humble, we're no longer humble. Humility and opening ourselves to the love of God, opening ourselves to the truth that God has waiting for us is truly a process by then which we have to reflect on all that we are trapped within. And you all know that we're trapped within a lot of things. Just speaking in the world, we talk about the environment. We talk about how we are struggling to deal with our relationships with others in terms of equality and how inequality has affected this world. Oh, these are hard issues. We don't always want to face them. And we're in a moment now in which we're being forced to face them. How long will we be able to hold on? Can this moment turn into a movement? Can we look at the world around us? I was looking up in the sky just the other day, and I saw the lines of jet fuel going across the sky, which I hadn't seen in quite a while. And remembering that those planes, when they stopped flying, actually started to clean up some of the air. And then we remember that we've been told that we've got to do something completely different with our environment. And when we start to think about how extreme should we get? And we had this pandemic and people stopped driving, people stopped flying, and all of a sudden the cities of the world started to clear up, the smog was gone. And we said, is this what it's going to take? Those are the big struggles. Dealing with becoming anti-racism, or, or dealing with anti-racism in a world in which inequality still prevails. But also we need to think about those struggles that we all face ourselves, those ways we are entrapped in our own lives. Those are the key elements that lead me to that very last point I want to make. And that is this. Jesus says, my burden is light. My yoke is not heavy. And so what have we always done to interpret this line? We always say, oh, it's not too hard to carry. When we forget what a yoke was to begin with. What was a yoke for? Well, we know that yokes were used for animals. And it wasn't about whether they were heavy or light. The yoke steered the animal in a direction or another. So when Jesus says, take upon this yoke, it is really a code word, if you will, for obedience. Where will we turn? And when we turn to God, will we follow God's way? Will we follow in that path? And Jesus says that yoke, that burden is not great. In fact, it is freeing. It is peace-filled. 
It gives to us more than we'll ever know. It shares with us something very important. I leave you with these today. Knowing that next week we will once again revisit these teachings. Knowing that the sense of struggle is the, one of the most important parts of being a person of faith. It is not just standing in some kind of a place to say, I don't have to think about it, I can just leave it all behind. But instead, knowing that you're no longer bound by it, trapped by it, and now following in that wondrous yoke of God's leadership and love, of God bringing us to a new and wonderful place. That's where I will leave you today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. As we go to our time of prayers, many of you are following the joys and concerns, and if you aren't, please let us know. You can always call the church. We will inform you. We will update you. Um, we will love to be able to do things by email in this new world. The numbers of sicknesses are, and, and, uh, and pandemic, I'm sorry, uh, coronavirus uh, uh, cases are going up right now. They're still not going down. Um, we are dealing with some of great difficulty. I thank you all for uh, being here, being a part of this in any way you can because we are finding a way to be community together and I will always celebrate that. And I also want to celebrate, we are well over, we're getting now close to 4,000 meals in our Feed the Hungry program. And the greater program that's working with coordinators is well over 20,000 meals shared. I want you to take that in. I want you to understand that in the midst of what we think where people are hiding away, we're actually able to feed and care for people in ways that we have maybe often ignored. I want us to see that as a great joy. I want to see as a great joy this month of Vacation Bible School and Music Camp. I hope that we remember and we can pass that along to each other and to our friends and family members for this month. And for those persons that are in the hospital or are getting ready for surgery or are coming home from the hospital, we know their names. And I, if you don't know them here in person, just know that you will when you go home and read your joys and concerns. And let's just continue to hold them in our prayers. So let's now go to God in prayer. To feel your presence, not only in this place, but in all of the places of our homes and our lives, we give you thanks, O oh God. But it doesn't keep us from the struggle of looking deeper than we care sometimes to look, of facing the real truth that gives to us a sense of wisdom and allows us to see the beauty and the true sense of guidance that comes from your grace. Allow us to hear, even in difficult moments, that your love is near. And as we surround one another in this community through both celebration and concern, we pray that you will fill us with your presence in your life. Be with us now as we take a moment to pray for those persons in our own hearts and minds that we hold dear or hold in, that we wish, wish to hold up at this time. Be with us now. Thank you, O oh God, for your Son, Jesus Christ, we lift up these prayers, and we know that you are with us as we continue to question what this generation means and who we will be, as we pray together as he taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. struggle and we pray these gifts will not only help this church community but help those in our community and in our world in jesus name we pray amen, amen. you may be seated and we'll now go directly to our table invitation and this is where you'll need your little cups but just 
be patient and we'll get to that. But I hope that everyone else is gathering their elements at home to your own table where we are coming now to the tables. Come to our tables, Holy One, and enliven our community with the intensity of your love. Come to our tables, Christ the teacher. Embolden our community with the urgency of your justice to receive clarity that comes through love and bring us together with your yoke of hope and promise of your salvation and strength. Fill our hearts, presence that never fails. Consecrate the gathered meal and fill us with life. On the night that Jesus was there with his disciples in the room, he broke the bread and he shared it with them. And he said to them, as often as you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after the supper, he took the cup from the fruit of the vine. And he lifted it. And he said, this cup is the cup of salvation poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink, and as often as you do, do it in remembrance of me. And now, lift off the first level, the clear level. You can also take your masks off at this moment. Let us, in our many places, receive the gift of God, the bread of heaven. We are, we are one, one in Christ, Christ in, the, in bread. the bread we share. Now you'll break off the foil portion, and it will expose the cup. Let us in our many places receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. We, we are, are one, one in Christ, Christ in, the in the cup, cup we, we share. share. Let us be in prayer. We thank you, O oh God, for this gift however changed it is in the way we share it now. But it is always a meal that is shared. It is always something that brings us and calls us not only to community, but to understand your salvation. Even in the midst of our struggles, even where we see that we are often entrapped, you are the true source of freedom in all that we do. You are the true source of victory in our lives. Bless us now and send us forth in that love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you would like to stand for our last hymn.
It is July 5th. This is part of the July 4th weekend and the celebration of the birthday of the United States of America. I hope that the hymns today have given you a little uh, pause for that. And I just know that our celebration, while different this year, still continues and the love that we have for our country. But we also struggle with knowing that the love that we have for our God leads us to new and wondrous places. And even as we struggle and as we grow, your wisdom, O oh God, will be with us. Send us forth now in that love, in that truth, and in that wisdom. We pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. next week. Remember when you're out